Today I would like to introduce you to one of my favorite poets and writers of the 20th century, mainly Octavio Paz, the great Mexican poet who was born in 1914. I have followed Octavio Paz's life and his writing for many years and am convinced that he has changed our thinking, our interpretation and also our entrance into the writing and especially the poetry. Octavio Paz thought a great deal about the nature of communication. How do we communicate? And he has come to the conclusion, which I believe is extremely important to understand, that all communications, all acts of communications are acts of translation. And therefore, we have to reorient ourselves when we read texts, we listen to texts, we listen to music, and we actually are exposed to visual images. I should also add that Octavio Paz has written very insightful books about painters. I go back to a statement that Octavio Paz made in one of his essays when he said, and demonstrated when the child asks his mother what does this word mean then the mother has to translate the word into the language of the child this is a different way of thinking about translation that is to say whenever we read we have to translate the text, what we read, what we see on the page, into our own sensibility. It is only in that transferal, in that transformation into our own thinking, into our own sensibility, that we begin to understand a text. And the very simple demonstration that Octavio Paz had with the mother and the child demonstrate this in a very convincing way. When we translate, we not only translate from another language into our own language, but we also translate within our own language. That is, a reading within English, for example, is a translation in itself, because each one of us translates what he or she reads in a different way. And it is only in that transformation that the text comes to life. And therefore, Octavio Paz was extremely interested in exploring the inner workings of words. And he wrote a very funny poem called Las Palabras, the words, in which he goes through all the different stages of what a word can do you can uh, uh, sound the word, you can scream the word, you can distort the word, you can also uh, put words together that ultimately may or may not put, uh, have any kind of sense. So the initiation and the introduction that Octavio Paz brings to us is a revitalization of the act of reading prompted by thinking about the function of translation. That is one of his contributions. The other part of his contribution is to look at the writing of poetry in a different way. Writing of poems is no longer the development of a particular topic or a particular subject. Writing of the poetry is to be get me the reader involved in the power of the word. The power of the word as meaning, the power of the word as sound, and the power of the word as visual appearance on the page. That means in very simple terms that it is no longer necessary to write poems in sequence of coherent lines. 
you can have all of a sudden a few words in one line, then you have a space and some word is being thrown either to the right or to the left of the line, then you might have all of a sudden three lines back together. But in each case, it is no longer a chronological reading of the poem. When you get to the end and somebody asks you, what is this poem about? You would have very great difficulties in defining this. What is happening, that the poem is built of various moments that are presented in visual and in musical form. So you have words sometimes that are together because they have the same kind of sound. Or you have words that have the same kind of direction of meaning. So if then, if you have a, you have a mountain of snow, then you think out what is involved in the mountain as its association but not necessarily as the beginning of telling you a story. So if you look at these pages, you become quite irritated because all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere, you have a word called radio and then nothing connected with this. You go to the next line and all of a sudden another word is being thrown out. When you look at the page per se, you have no logical sequence. So what has happened is we are being moved away from reconstructing a poem in its logical semantic sequence, but we are confronted each time with a particular explosive moment that the poet has created and these moments ultimately have to be put together by the reader. When you first go into these poems, and I'm now talking about one of his longest poems called Wind from All Compass Points, El Presente es Perpetuo, a very long poem, very long poem, and very disturbing when you first get into the poem because you don't know really what to make of it. But to reconstruct the poem, you have to put those words together that have similar either visual orientation or similar uh, directions of thinking. So the poem is being recreated by the various moments that have similarities either in visual or semantic orientation or sometimes that it's only one word that relates to another word maybe half a page later. So what Octavio Paz has done has brought an innovation into the writing of poetry that was not there to the extent before. Our sequence that we are used to, that we hope that each sentence is related to the next, has been abandoned and we now have to think in different terms. We have to think associatively, we have to think vertically, or I should say hor horizontally, in order to recreate for me, the reader, of how the various situations, moments in the poem belong together and therefore create their own experience. We're no longer talking that much about meaning. We're talking about the experience that we experience, that we are involved in when we read the poem. And we have moments of understanding, moments of entrance into the poem, but they can change from one moment to the next. And at the end, one could say, what is the poem all about? We have very great difficulties in articulating this, but we are once again drawn into the poem because of the power of the word, the image, and especially, especially the sound that the poet has created through the visual appearance of the words. So from my point of view, Octavio Paz can introduce us to a different way of thinking in the 20th century when we are confronted with literary works or maybe even with essayistic works. And therefore, we are becoming no longer involved, or we should say, we are no longer 
looking at the work as an object, but we are looking at the work as a recreation of the movements inside the word and inside the work. And that at the beginning causes us a lot of difficulties, but at the same time it is a change that we no longer talk about the work, but we recreate the work, we are inside the work and reconstruct it.